John Snyder, a.k.a. Bo Duke, right here on Enid Buzz. How are you, sir? I'm fantastic. You know, we've had actually our best year and a half ever. Wow. Yeah. That, that yeah. is pretty cool in uh, a COVID year and all the other things that uh, we had going, uprisings and riots and all that. Uh, how did you accomplish something like that? Well, it's a decision, you know. I think uh, I think that that work or success, whatever, whatever that is. And, and I believe that success is doing every day that which you love, regardless of what it is or what it makes you, what it earns you. So I, I think that's a decision. And um, it's something that is innately American. You know, it is, it is part of our uh, fabric that we, we are the masters of our own destiny. Okay, you know, that's all highbrow stuff, but it, it's true. And, and there have been folks, I think, over the last year and a half uh, that have tried to tell us that we are the masters of our own destiny as long as we have permission. <laughs> and I've never bought into that. So, yeah, freedom, yeah, freedom is not, you're not free if you're only free so far. It's like trusting someone. If you can only trust someone so far, you can't trust them at all. So my business as well, Enid Buzz, here for all the people in the Northwest Oklahoma area. Uh, I had a great year as well. I did not get shut down. I was out doing interviews, talking to people, bringing people the events and the news. Now, there were less events going on, but there were a lot more businesses that need needed plugging to get more people into there, you know, like restaurants and things like that. So, so oh, sure. I, I as well, uh, working for myself, much like you, had the freedom to get out and do what I needed to do all year long. Well, I applaud you for that, especially with regard to helping folks uh, who were unceremoniously shut down. Yeah. Uh, in a free country, we had people who were told they could not open. And yet these people still had mortgages. These pe people still had bills. And, and yet they were told that they, they could no longer uh, pursue happiness what what is up with that boy i i don't know if see, if you'd have told me that was going to happen 10 years five years ago i would have said you were crazy well i tell you i tell you what's very very important about right now is we must not let it happen again i did a facebook post before this this stuff happened uh when they first started and we we do our event called bose extravaganza of course we're doing bows on the road at longdale uh, at the speedway, I'm going to be racing. It's going to be it's going to be a wonderful weekend. But I say that because um, in 2020, when we were about to do our uh, Bose Extravaganza in Louisiana, um, people were all shocked that we were still going to do it because the powers that be were telling us that we couldn't. We could not. Uh, we were supposed to give up our right of peaceful assembly. And, you know, we talk about the First Amendment, we talk about the Second Amendment, vitally important amendments, certainly. But our right of peaceful assembly is at the foundation of all of it. And uh, I just, I, I refuse to give up my right of peaceful assembly. And <clears throat> I'm very hoarse today. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure why. But we need to, we need to remember how easily we gave a lot of things up because I'm not a conspiracy theorist by any means, but I do know that there are likely many people who paid attention to how readily we gave up many of our rights. We can't do that again. I'm not an anarchist by any means, but we must not allow our fundamental rights as citizens of, I believe, the greatest country, the greatest, yes, experiment, in the history of the world, we must not allow whoever they are to take away our rights so easily because we were awarded our rights by the blood of people who are no longer with us. When we give up our rights so handily, we are diminishing their sacrifice, and we must not do it. Speaking of that, and you already mentioned it, the uh, Bo Extravaganza, Bo's Extravaganza. Yeah, 
So now that now that things are starting to lift and, and things are opening up, you guys are out on the road. You're coming to Longdale, Oklahoma, which is in yes, North we Oklahoma, are not that far from Enid, Oklahoma. This is like a three day event. Tell us, kind of, give us some of the highlights. Now you mentioned just a, a second ago that you're going to be racing. So you're actually I am. one of the cars. I had no I'm idea. I'm going to be racing. I have I have my very own one of a kind. Bose General Lee open wheel modified dirt track car. Wow, that is very cool. Yes. And uh, in case anyone's wondering, yes, it has 01 on it. Yes, it has General Lee on it, named after Robert E. Lee. And yes, it still has the battle flag on the roof. Wow. So I, I race that car with the folks who do this every weekend. So I'm a little crazy, okay? I'm a little crazy, uh, but I tell you what, I, I enjoy dirt track racing more than, than just about anything in the world. So I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be playing music. Uh, I have my band there. We have Cody McCarver from Confederate Railroad. We have Keith Burns from Trick Pony. We have a couple of local, local acts that I have not met yet, but I'm very excited about meeting them. Uh, we have Mark Anthony, who is a stunt man out of a, uh, he has a company in, um, in Texas that uh, he, he does, his specialty is high falls, which he's going to be doing. And uh, I think he's going to be doing it on fire. Yeah, that's, uh, he's going to do that as safely as he possibly can. But I've challenged Mark to a race to find out whether or not the actor is actually, uh, can beat the stunt man. So we're going to be doing a race as well. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have VIP night is on Friday. We're doing music. We're showing uh, our movie uh, Stand On It, which is a tribute to Smokey and the Bandit. Um, and really at the core of it is we're, we're trying to get people back together to have a conversation and to fall back in love with their hometown. So uh, that's what Bo's Extravaganza on the Road is about. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Music, food, fun. But getting to know one another again, rekindling friendships with folks we already know, making new friends with people we haven't met yet. That's at the core of our event. Sounds like a great time. So is, can everybody, is everybody open to get the VIP tickets for Friday night? Is that? Yes, there aren't that many of them. The, the okay. VIP night is so that we can talk kind of like you and I are talking now. Um, so I think it's limited to a hundred. Okay. So if you want to get it, it's not cheap. I'm going to warn you. It's not cheap. I don't know what it is, but it's not cheap. But it is the actual opportunity. You know, people come to to these big events, and uh, when we did uh, two years ago at Bose Extravaganza, there were ten thousand people there. Wow! So the opportunity for casual conversation was kind of nil. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if if you want to know about what makes me tick, you want to talk about uh, about. 40 something years of television and and we can do that you want to talk to a, a real stunt man and ask him about stunts you have a desire to be a stunt man yourself a stunt woman yourself you can talk to him it'd be great um we're filming part of our movie uh poker run which is our uh sequel to stand on it so we're going to be filming that there because part of it takes place at a dirt track so if you want to be in the movie you can be in the movie uh, and I think that's kind of fun. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, a guy who snuck onto the set of Smokey and the Bandit in 1976 and actually got in the movie. Well, you can be in our movie and you don't have to sneak in. Very cool. <laughs> I, was, I was actually going to ask you about that story. I had heard that you had snuck in on that movie. Now, were you actually, have, are you actually in the background somewhere? I am. I am uh, when the movie ends and the tire falls off Jackie Gleason's car, it rolls into the crowd and then they, they freeze frame. So when they freeze frame, just look at the, there's a tall gangly 16 year old John Schneider there with a big black cowboy hat and a vest. Oh my gosh, I haven't changed since 1976. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, and it, it, uh, it, the frame freezes and I'm standing there and we kind of recreated that at the very end of the movie we have, we're showing uh, Friday night, Stand On It, which is our tribute to Smokey and the Bandit. But it was vitally important to the 16-year-old living in the now 61-year-old's body that our movie ended like Smokey and the Bandit did. 
no. so uh check that out it, it's so much fun i mean i'm a, i'm a, i have I'm 61, but I feel like I'm maybe 14 at best. Oh wow! You, you and me, you and me are, are will connect. I will try to be there on Friday night. <laughs> on on Saturday night is Saturday night the night you guys the band is going to be playing. Yes, we're going to be we're going to be doing some music on Friday night as well. Oh, on Saturday are? night we've got uh, Keith Burns from Trick Pony, Cody McCarver from Confederate Railroad, the Stars and Bars Band, and myself will be doing the. Uh, the show. Hopefully, I won't sound like this on that Saturday night, but we'll be doing the show on Saturday night. Uh, it's going to be great. We have food, we have stunts. Like I said, Mark is going to be jumping off something into an airbag on fire. Uh, we're going to be racing, and also we're going. To, I'm going to be racing Saturday night. So actually, let me let me backtrack a little bit. The concert is Saturday afternoon oh, okay. because once the races start, once the races start at Longdale Speedway, the races are on. We don't get in their way, but I will be out, I'll be doing the national anthem uh, and explaining that the national anthem is actually a question uh, about whether or not our flag is still flying over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Then I will be getting into my car and racing with the big dogs. Wow. So uh, say a little prayer. Uh, and then on Sunday morning, should I survive Saturday night, we have Cowboy Church, which again is with Cody and with Keith and myself, uh, the Stars and Bars Band. Um, we do have a local pastor who will be giving a message, giving a sermon. Forgive me, I don't know the local pastor's name yet. I'm not sure that we have solidified that, but we will have Cowboy Church on Sunday morning. And uh, it's kind of a throwback to what, when, when I, I'm a recovering Yankee, I'm from Mount Kisco, New York. And my grandfather was a volunteer fireman in a little town called Katona, New York. And every year I would be part of the parade and the carnival, and we would have a little festival every June. Actually, my gosh, it's right almost exactly at the same time we're doing this at Longdale. Oh, wow. But I was part of that. And that, to me, is what makes this country great. So we're trying to get back to that. We're bringing it to Longdale. We're going, to, uh, we're going to observe how six-year-olds get along in a dirt pile, and we're going to try to emulate them as best we can as adults. So uh, this, this is a, a great way to get back. Not only, I, I don't believe in the whole new normal thing. I believe in getting back to not only what we were, but what we were better. Gotcha. Well, it's something personal real quick I want to ask you. So I grew up, I think you were born in 1960. I was born in 62. Yes. So you and I both grew up in the 70s. You're, you're, you talked about how you feel like a 14-year-old. I mean, I, I literally feel like a 16-year-old. I, I, I wear shorts every day. I've, I've been a cartoonist. I work for myself. But And I've started a podcast. Oh, that's great. And I do a podcast. We've been doing it for three years, and it's called the 70s Buzz Podcast. And we talk about everything the 70s because we ran around Enid, Oklahoma on our bikes. Nobody knew who we were. Growing up, like what were kind of some of your favorite 70s memories, maybe TV shows, things like that? Now, I know Dukes of Hazard started what around 79? Is that Dukes started 79? Yeah. So we okay. were, uh, we were kind of a show of the 70s, but uh, we started filming in 78. Okay. Uh, my favorite shows were Lost in Space. Oh, love uh, it. I had a dream actually one night that they were filming, not that I was on the Jupiter 2 and part of the Robinson family, but they were filming at my dad's upholstery shop. Uh, and, and somehow I got it right. There was even a coffee pot. There was craft service. So that was a big part of my life, as was the Wild Wild West. Oh, my lunchbox. In fact, when we just, oh, I loved it. A great theme song. Great, other than Duke's, the greatest theme song ever. Although the Rockford Files was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so we just made a, a, a comment about a, a throwback to the Wild Wild West in the movie we did, Poker Run. Uh, we, we walk into a caboose and, and uh, Cody McCarver says, wow, this looks like James West's office. Oh, cool. So those were favorite shows. Starsky and Hutch, of course, was a favorite show of mine. Uh, I was I was 16 during the height of the disco craze, so uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the stylistics. I mean, I'm I'm a. You and I were both the right age at 
just the right time. We, we on our show, and we need that. We need yeah. that time now more than ever, which is maybe why we lived through it in the first place. Well, and that's why we're doing the podcast to remind or inform all these young people that did not grow up in the 70s how cool it was and we call it the greatest decade known to man and and we just <laughs> we just we talked to every and, and we're, we got t-shirts and everything and but it's just we want we, we're the same way we want to remind people of that innocence and that everybody was together and and there just wasn't all the bickering and fighting maybe there was and we didn't know it because we were too young but it just seemed like it was all about family and well it wasn't it wasn't in our pockets you know we didn't have all this stuff coming to our pockets you and i still took our records physically we took our our lps and our little box of 45s to our friend's house and listened to music we listened to cat stevens and james taylor and grand funk railroad yeah right Yep. You know, we, we did that and we, we enjoyed it. And one of the biggest, biggest issues I have with what we've all been through in the last year and a half or so, especially the last year, is making that kind of communication, that kind of conversation, not only unpopular, but damn near illegal. You know, this, this whole thing has been the enemy of free expression. Yes, free speech, but free expression. Making, making gathering in public, making peaceful assembly something that is illegal keeps us from being who we are. So if we were a society that still brought our LPs and our little box of 45s to our friend's house, that would have to have gone underground. We would have to have done that illegally. What a travesty that is. Yeah. I, am, I am glad that my father did not live to see what we've been through. So we have got to not only get back to where we were, we have to get back to where we were better so that not only can we continue as the greatest country in the world, but so that we can thrive and continue to be an example to other countries as the greatest country in the world. Because we are. There are people that will tell you we're not. We are, and we must continue to be so. Well, great. And, and your extravaganza is gonna be a part of that, bringing everybody together. So I am so looking forward to it. It's an American reunion. How about there, that? It's, there we it's, go. A, it's a hometown reunion. Awesome. Well, I will try to get everybody from Enid up to Longdale to see you. I will post all the dates, all of the information, Please do. times, and all that for you, links. So they just go to bowsextravaganza.com. They can get more details. Yep. Like the tickets there. Yep. Yep. Guide passes there as well. Yep. Or they can go to John Schneider Studios or get my app. I have an app. You know, I'm an oh. old guy with an app. It's called John Schneider. Very and cool. uh, it's free. It'll work on your iPhone. It'll work on your, uh, on your Android. Won't work on your flip phone, but not much does. Yeah. So, um, so get a hold of that and you can find tickets to that. The VIP is not cheap, but it's worth it. If you really want to sit around and talk, that's the way to go. The rest of the weekend is going to be great fun as well. So come on out. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. I look forward to seeing all of you. Okay, great. Thank you, John. We'll see you when you get You take care. Tomorrow. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I really appreciate it. I look forward to meeting you. Yeah, you as well. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. Thanks, John. See ya.